Hello and welcome to In-Depth. I'm Tina Jha. Prime Minister Narendra Modi will read Qingdao in China for the 18th SEO Summit on the 9th of June. This is the first SEO Summit that India will attend as a full member. The two-day summit is likely to see India pitch for concerted regional and global action against terror networks and favour effective connectivity links to boost trade. India is also keen on deepening its security-related cooperation with the SEO and its regional anti-terrorism structure that specifically deals with issues relating to security and defence. In today's episode, we are focusing on the agenda for the SEO Summit, a history of how the organisation evolved and answer what are its objectives. So Prime Minister Narendra Modi will be leaving for a two-day visit to China for the 18th edition of the Shanghai Cooperation Organization, that is the SCO Summit. India's focus at the summit will be on strengthening cooperation to fight terrorism, also improving connectivity among member countries and bringing peace and stability in the region. Xingdao in China is the Shangdong province. All set for the 18th Shanghai Cooperation Organization or the SCO Summit. It is the fourth time that the annual summit is being held in China. The city has been decked all over with banners and posters welcoming the delegates and the streets are lined up with the flags of the participating nations. The SCO has eight member states including India, four observer states and six dialogue partners. After being found nearly two decades back in 2001, the international organization now boasts of eight full members, the latest entrants being India and Pakistan. That will participate as full-fledged SEO members for the first time. They were earlier the observer nations. The other full-fledged members are China, Russia, Kyrgyzstan, Uzbekistan, Tajikistan and Kazakhstan. Prime Minister Modi will attend the SEO Heads of States meeting in both the restricted as well as the extended formats. Apart from taking part in the SEO summit, Prime Minister Modi will hold a bilateral meeting with Chinese President Xi Jinping on the sidelines on Saturday. The meeting comes after an informal summit between the two leaders in Wuhan in April, where PM Modi and Xi Jinping held wide-ranging discussions. तो दोनों लीडर्स मेरे ख्याल से ये उम्मीद रखते हैं कि वो वहाँ पे जो बातें हुई हैं उसका उसका कुछ यहाँ आके पांच हफ्ते बाद उसको कैसे आगे ले जाना है और कैसे आगे हम ले जा रहे हैं इस पे बातचीत होगी। This will really be the first summit that India will be participating in as a full member after it was admitted as a full member of the Shanghai Cooperation Organization last year. At its meeting in Astana in Tashkent in June 2017. The SEO summit is expected to focus on opportunities for cooperation among the member countries and the situation in the region. The SEO's consensus driven model will compel China and India to face incongruities in their own regional security priorities. The summit comes weeks after Prime Minister Modi's address at the Shangri La Dialogue, where the Prime Minister had emphasized that Asia and the world will have a better future when the two countries work together with trust and confidence. If we remember, there was uh, just uh, 40 days ago those two very important and significant head of the nation uh, in Asia, President Xi Jinping and President Prime Minister Modi, they met in Wuhan and 40 days later, President uh, Minister Modi came to Qingdao again and uh, asked him Premier Minister Modi signed in Shanghai uh, Dialogue and China and, and India, we shared very multi-levels things, mm -hmm. not only the security, not only the bo border dispute, we also have the market. We are the big one and big two population nations in the world. Prime Minister Modi is also expected to hold nearly half a dozen bilateral meetings with the leaders of other SEO countries. However, there is no official word on whether there will be any interaction between Prime Minister Modi and Pakistan President, who is also scheduled to attend the summit. With Vishal Dahiya in China, Bureau Report, Rajasabha TV. So China, which is the host country, is making a mark in the use of artificial intelligence. Some of its expertise in the field is on display at the SEO Summit that even has digital lockers for journalists that can be operated through facial recognition. 
Our correspondent Vishal Daya brings us this ground report. China is known for its technological prowess and the advancement of technology here and the same has been used in this particular conference as well. We are at the media center right now and we can see that there has been extensive use of technology, artificial intelligence to try and facilitate the delegates and the journalists as well. This is a locker system wherein you do not need a key, you do not need any numbers, anything if you need at all is just your face that is the system will work on facial recognition let me show you here so this is uh, the system uh, i if i have to deposit something i will press this button and it will recognize my face it says 90 percent and here the locker is open i can put my stuff easily lock it back and that's all so that means my stuff is now safe i didn't have to use any key i didn't have to use any numbers similarly if i want to go ahead and retrieve my stuff take it back the only thing i have to do is come back here press this remove button show my face and it opens again and there's my stuff so clearly a wonderful use of technology to try and ensure that there are no hurdles there are no hassles for the people who are here the delegates as well as the journalists with camera person sudhanshu this is vishal dhaya from qingdao china so coming back to what india's agenda at the summit is going to be for the country the major focus at the seo summit will be connectivity and terrorism it will focus on increasing access to afghanistan through pakistan besides using the opportunity to push the fight against terrorism the focus of SCO summit will be on regional security challenges with a significant outcome document on counterterrorism. Apart from this, issues like connectivity, economic cooperation and people-to-people -people exchanges will also be part of the discussion. As a regional grouping, the main focus of the SCO is to ensure regional security and connectivity of Central Asian countries with the rest of the member countries. They are also expected to discuss the situation arising out of U.S. sanctions against Iran and the Belt and Road Initiative. Members are also expected to hold talks on the issue of Korean Peninsula ahead of the summit between U.S. President Donald Trump and North Korean President Kim Jong-un. Sanctions that have been imposed by the United States on <coughs> Russia, on uh, Iran and on North Korea, those sanctions will also come up for discussion. The situation in North Korea, in the North Korean Peninsula, that will also be an issue that will be discussed. What is happening, I think, as far as uh, the uh, West Asia is concerned, what is happening in Syria, what is happening as far as the nuclear deal, Iranian nuclear deal is concerned. For India, the major focus will be on connectivity and terrorism. India would focus on forging connectivity from India to Afghanistan through Pakistan, India will also use the opportunity to push the fight against terrorism. This will be the first SCO summit after India became a member in June 2017. Among other issues, the summit is expected to focus on opportunities for cooperation among SCO members and the situation in the region. It gives an opportunity for India to work together with other major powers of the region, Eurasian region, primarily Russia and China and then with our friends like Uzbekistan, Kazakhstan, Kyrgyzstan to make sure that the extremism, the religious fundamentalism which is plaguing West Asia, which is plaguing Pakistan, which is plaguing so many other countries is contained, is controlled in the Eurasian region. On the 9th of June, Prime Minister Modi will meet host Chinese President Xi Jinping besides having short meetings with all heads of governments of all member countries. Such meetings are normally organized for a quick review of bilateral relations and also set the direction of deliberation of the SEO summit. The Prime Minister will also address the plenary session and take part in a restricted session of the summit. Prime Minister's programming Qingdao includes participation in the welcome banquet hosted by the Chinese President Xi Jinping in the evening of 9th June 2018. The main day of the SEO summit is 10th June. Prime Minister will attend the SEO Heads of States meeting in both the restricted as well as the extended formats. In addition, bilateral meetings of Prime Minister are planned on the sidelines of the summit. The SEO summit is a forum which enables India to engage with the countries of 
Central Asia. The meeting with the Pakistani president is not on the agenda of Prime Minister Modi, despite the fact that Pakistan is the latest entrant at the summit with India. All members will sign a common declaration and agreement on the 10th of June at the end of the summit. Terror is a big part of this. And the most important part of the summit will be given to the document from this summit. It will be given to the declaration of the Chintao. So, I hope that the declaration of the Chintao will be given to the counter-terrorism, the terrorism, the terrorism, the terrorism, the terrorism. The SEO summit comes in the backdrop of a trade war between China and the U.S., fresh sanctions against Russia and the cancellation of a nuclear deal between U.S. and Iran. India will raise the issue of multipolarity and reforms in the U.N. system, also the scope of political unanimity among the member countries. It will be interesting to see how China responds to the situations in the region, especially on the issues of terrorism and balance of power. The SEO summit is taking place at a time when Malabar exercise is going on, India, Australia, Japan and America are talking in the form of Quad and Pakistan has entered in the SEO summit for the first time as full member. It will be interesting to see that how India pushes forward the issue of terrorism and also how India-China relationship is being redefined. Akhilesh Suman for Raj Sawa Television with Kamar Pasan Dusmanta in Delhi. Time for a very short break on the program. We'll be right back. Welcome back. You're watching In Depth on the SCO Summit. The main areas of cooperation for the eight-member SCO are security, counter-terrorism, economic development and economic growth, cultural harmony and cultural exchange. The current international situation adds many more opportunities for the SCO. Let's consider them in greater detail in our next report. The Shanghai Cooperation Organization is a Eurasian political, economic and military organization. It grew out of the Shanghai Five that was founded in 1996 with China, Russia, Kazakhstan, Kyrgyzstan and Tajikistan as its original members. After the disintegration of the Soviet Union in 1991, uh, China has had a large number of undecided and disputed borders with uh, many of these countries which became independent after the disintegration of the Soviet Union. So one was the Russian Federation, which was uh, 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 a product which uh, emerged after uh, Soviet Union ceased to exist. Then uh, there was Kazakhstan. It has a boundary. It has a uh, border of about 17, 1800 kilometers with China. Then uh, Kyrgyzstan and Tajikistan. So these were the original five members. On the 15th of June 2001, Uzbekistan joined the group that was officially renamed the Shanghai Cooperation Organization. In June 2002, the Shanghai Cooperation Organization Charter was signed at the St. Petersburg SCO Heads of State meeting. The Charter came into force on the 19th September 2003. It is the fundamental statutory document that outlines the organization's goals and principles, its structure and core activities. In June 2017, the SEO accorded permanent membership to India and Pakistan, taking the number of full members in the group to eight. The presence of China and India, the world's most populous countries, makes the SEO an organization with the largest population coverage. Shanghai Cooperation Organization was initially established to secure relations about security. And the three main points were that the countries were supposed to work together to fight against terrorism, separatism, and extremism. Now, these three are the primary goals of Shanghai Cooperation Organization. Over the years, SCO has become a comprehensive regional organization. In fact, the largest in terms of geographical coverage and population. For India, this is the first summit as a full member state. Apart from eight permanent member states, the SCO has four observer states, Afghanistan, Belarus, Iran and Mongolia. Countries like Azerbaijan, Armenia, Cambodia, Nepal, Turkey and Sri Lanka are dialogue partners in the organization. The main goals of the SCO include strengthening mutual trust and relations among member states, promoting cooperation in politics, trade, economy, research, technology and culture, 
enhancing ties in areas like education, energy, transport, tourism and environmental protection. Maintaining and ensuring peace, security and stability in the region and moving towards establishing a democratic, fair and rational new international political and economic order. This will really be the first uh, summit that uh, India will be participating in as a full member after it was admitted uh, as a full member of the Shanghai Cooperation Organization last year at its meeting in Astana in Tashkent in June uh, 2017. The Heads of State Council is the supreme decision-making body in the SCO. It meets once a year and adopts decisions and guidelines on all important matters of the organization. The Heads of Government Council is the second highest body. It also meets once a year to discuss the organization's multilateral cooperation strategy and priority areas, resolve current important economic and other cooperation issues, and also to approve the organization's annual budget. Apart from HSC and the HGC, meetings are also held at the level of heads of parliament, secretaries of security councils, ministers of foreign affairs, defense, economy, transport, culture, education and healthcare. The Council of National Coordinators of SEO member states acts as the SEO coordination mechanism. The SEO has two permanent bodies, the SEO Secretariat, which is based in Beijing, and the Executive Committee of the Regional Anti-Terrorist Structure based in Tashkent. The SEO Secretary General as well as the Director of the Executive Committee of Regional Anti-Terrorist Structure are appointed by the Council of Heads of State for a term of three years. Originally formed as a confidence-building forum to demilitarize borders, the SEO's goals and agenda broadened over the years to include increased military and counter-terrorism cooperation as well as intelligence sharing. In recent years, economic cooperation has become one of the most pressing goals of the organization. Bureau Report the India-China relationship has been marked by border disputes and even a war. But the fact remains that India was the first non-communist country to recognize People's Republic of China after its proclamation in 1949. Also, China has time and again claimed parts of India's territory as its own, resulting in heightened tensions between the two countries. Here's a look at how the relationship evolved between the two countries down the years. India and China won their independence almost at the same time. While India became independent on 15th August 1947, the People's Liberation Army defeated the Nationalist Party on October 1, 1949. On 30th October, India became the first non-communist nation to recognize People's Republic of China and in 1950 appointed K. M. Panikkar as the first Indian ambassador to China. In 1954, China and India signed the Punch Shield document taking India-China relations to a new level. However, China's stand on Tibet came as a disappointment to Nehru and his vision of peaceful coexistence. On 3rd April 1959, India granted asylum to Dalai Lama, who had escaped from Lhasa after China's annexation of Tibet. This was the start of relations taking a bad turn between India and China. India-China conflict over border issues started in the 1950s with China beginning to occupy parts of Indian territory on China-India border. China launched a massive attack on India on 20th October 1962. The border clash resulted in India's defeat as the Chinese army pushed Indian forces to within 48 kilometers of Assam. The war ended with China declaring a unilateral ceasefire on 21st November and withdrew 20 kilometers behind its contended line of control. Relations between China and India deteriorated during the rest of 1960s and the early 1970s, till India and China decided in 1976 to restore diplomatic relations after a 15-year diplomatic halt. Relations started to thaw in December 1988 with the visit of then Prime Minister Rajiv Gandhi to China. Several agreements on economy, trade, science and technology were signed during this visit. In 2004, both countries proposed opening the Nathala and the Jalekpla passes in Sikkim. In the same year, bilateral trade surpassed the $10 billion mark for the first time ever. In April 2005, Chinese Premier Wen Jiabo visited Bangalore to push for increased India-China cooperation in high-tech industries. In 2006, China and India reopened the Nathala pass for trading after 44 years. In 2010, Wen Xiaobo, accompanied by 400 Chinese business leaders, 
visited India to boost trade between the two countries. In April 2011, during the BRICS summit in China, the two countries agreed to restore defense cooperation. After the summit, China also stopped the practice of administering stapled visas to residents of Jammu and Kashmir. The relations entered a new phase with Chinese President Xi Jinping's visit to India on September 2014. Breaking protocol, Prime Minister Narendra Modi received him in Ahmedabad. China promised $20 billion worth of investments in India over five years during his visit. In May 2015, Prime Minister Modi visited China to further boost the bilateral relations. Bureau Report, Rajya Sabha TV. Well, that's it from us in this edition of In-Depth. We'll be back same time tomorrow with a focus on another subject. You can also watch all our episodes on YouTube and Twitter and also leave behind your valuable suggestions and feedback. Thanks for your time.